Using an agent to get your malpractice insurance up and running is a smart way to begin your practice. But what happens if you start the quotation process and then realize you've picked the wrong agent to begin with? Well, in today's episode, we're going to talk about how to switch agents, even if you're in the middle of getting your insurance set up for the very first time. And at the end of this episode, you'll have some templates and some resources that you can use to make sure you've got yourself aligned with the right strategic partner for the future. Stay tuned. Welcome to Malpractice Insights, the show dedicated to helping healthcare professionals understand medical malpractice insurance and providing you with the solutions you need so that you can get back to the work of practicing good medicine. My name is Jennifer Wiggins, CEO of Aegis Malpractice Solutions, and I'm so glad you've joined us today. All right, let's jump in. So there are two different types of agents that you can work with for malpractice quotes, direct agents or independent agents. And we've touched on this topic in previous episodes, but let's do a quick review together, starting with direct agents. A direct agent works for a specific insurance company. Their job is to sell insurance for the company that they work for. They are captive agents, and they can only offer one malpractice solution from one company, the one they work for. So if you're going to work with a direct agent, you're only going to get one quote. A doctor or group would need to contact multiple different carriers on their own in order to get coverage options to consider, which can be a time-consuming and tedious process. Independent agents, on the other hand, do not work for any one company. They represent multiple companies, which gives them the ability to shop around and find the best fit for you. Independent agents aren't beholden to any one company, which means they are working for you, not the carriers. Having access to multiple companies benefits you because it drives competition, resulting in lower costs. Insurance policies aren't like typical consumer products, where the same item can be sold for different price through different means. Rates are filed with and regulated by the Department of Insurance in each state. And carriers do not have different rates for the business that they write direct versus the business they write through an independent agent. So a direct agent isn't able to offer a lower price than an independent agent could. The company has to issue the same quote for either type of agent. Furthermore, many malpractice insurance companies don't even sell directly. They will only work through independent agents. So even if you were to call on them, they would likely refer you out to one of their appointed independent agents to provide you with a quote. Since the rate is the same, whether you work directly with the company or through an independent agent, most doctors prefer to work with someone that is not affiliated with the carrier in order to get an objective, fair review of all of the available coverage options. Okay, so now that you've decided that working with an agent is the best option for you, let's talk about how the agent selection process works. When you engage with an agent and you ask them to get quotes on your behalf, you are essentially selecting them to represent you in the marketplace. Insurance companies can only issue one quote for a particular insured at a time, and they will give that quote to the first agent that brings them the business. They won't give the same quote to multiple agents. They will only issue it once, and it goes to the first one in the door. Sometimes doctors think that it might be easier to just work with multiple agents to have lots of different people working on their behalf, but this can get messy real quick. When you work with multiple agents, it can quickly become the wild, wild west. It's every man for themselves and agents can block the markets, which means they try to get the first submission in the door so that no other agent can approach that company on your behalf. Agents do this to control the market and to make sure that they are the only ones you can work with. We actually have a full episode on the four reasons why you shouldn't work with more than one agent. So we'll link it here on the screen and we'll also drop it in the show notes for you. Be sure to check out that episode next. I think you'll find it really helpful. 
So what happens if you decide that you don't want to work with the agent that you originally selected anymore? But maybe they've already got your quote requests pending. Well, it is possible to make an agent change in the middle of the quote process, but it's usually easier to take another path. If it's close to your start date, an agent change will usually take way too much time. So often our recommended approach is to serve as a consultant to independently review the quotes that you've been given and then help you make a selection for coverage. But you'll need to bind it with the original agent that you were working with. After the policy has been issued and the premium has been paid, then you can sign an agent change form and switch your agent representation mid-year to have someone else help you going forward. Granted, this means that the initial agent is going to get the commission on your policy, but in the grand scheme of things, this is simplifying the process and getting you the best coverage at the best price. We'll work out the agent representation on the back end. If you do want to release your current agent and request new representation, you'll do so by letting your insurance carrier know through the process of a broker of record change, or a BOR. Some carriers also call it an agent of record change or an AOR, but it's the same thing. With a broker of record or BOR change, your policy stays the same. You just change who you're working with. Most carriers will approve BOR changes without question especially if it's due to a concern with service, lack of knowledge, etc. You'll initiate a BOR by signing a statement, usually on your practice's letterhead, giving the insurance carrier your name, your policy number, and advising that you'll want to change your agent. At this time, you'll need to request a new agent by name and ask that they take over at a specific point in time. Here's an example of some verbiage from a BOR template. Effective immediately, please let this letter serve as acknowledgement that I appoint Bob Jones of Jones Insurance Agency to serve as my new agent of record for policy number XYZ with your company. I am requesting to terminate my current agent and use Jones Insurance Agency with your company going forward. After you send in your agent change letter, the insurance carrier will review and determine if they can approve the request. The agent must be appointed with them and on good terms. It's not a guarantee that they will approve your request. If the requested agent is appointed with them and meets their criteria, then the insurance carrier will notify the current agent of the change request and they will be given 10 days to try and get a rescinding letter. At this time, your current agent will come back to you and try to win back your business. So you can either hold firm and tell them no, or you could give them a second chance. If you want to give them another shot, then they will have you sign a rescinding letter, advising the carrier that you've changed your mind and you want to keep things the same. But if you're ready to make a change, then you just let your current agent know that you are moving on. And after 10 days, the carrier will switch your representation to the new agent. Now, this 10-day window can be problematic at times because during this time, you're kind of in limbo. You can't start working with the new agent until the 10 days is up. So often doctors will ask the insurance carrier to waive the 10-day waiting period, especially if you're eager to get quotes or you need to get moving on a renewal or coverage changes. We have a free download for you with an agent of record change template and it includes a statement about asking to waive the rescinding period. I think you'll find it helpful as you work with your insurance carrier to make the necessary changes to your policy. You can access this template in the show notes for today's episode. Once you've made the agent change, then you're all set to start working with your new agent or broker. When you're aligned with the right malpractice insurance agent, you'll be able to practice with much more confidence. And if you need some tips on how to select a new agent, we have another whole episode for you on how to pick the right broker. So we'll link that episode in the show notes for you today as well. If you have any questions on this topic or you want to make sure that you're covered appropriately, click the link in the description box below where you can connect with us via phone, email, or chat today. 
And if you're listening, please visit us online at aegismalpractice.com. That's A-E-G-I-S malpractice.com. And of course, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to give us a like and a follow. And I'd really love your feedback if you could please leave me a review. Your support really does help us to reach more people. And we're so grateful for your clicks and for your kind words. This is Jennifer Wiggins. Thanks for joining us.